Hello, Internet. It is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today, we're going to be talking about Transformers Rise of the Beast. So, as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons. So, let's get to it. Pros. Transformers as a whole, it's a massive franchise, to say the least. I mean, it's been around since the 80s. You got the toys, you got the animated shows, you got the comics, games, and of course, the movies. And let's talk about the movies, because there's quite a bit to discuss. So, let's do that. I'm ignoring the Transformers the movie from the 80s. That was based off the animated show. Ignoring that. Live action movies only. Okay. So, these live action Transformers movies started 16 years years ago in 2007 and the one and only michael bay decided he was going to take a crack at the at transformers and make you know the first movie and you know when it came out it was a massive massive hit it made over 300 million domestic 700 million worldwide it was one of the biggest hits of 2007 uh, audiences really, really liked it. Critics were just like, eh, it could have been worse, but audiences loved it, <laughs> absolutely adored it, which explains its big box office tally. And with this success, obviously, you got to make more, right? <laughs> you can't just stop with one. So two years later, 2009, we have Revenge of the Fallen. Despite that movie being utter trash... <laughs> Which was partially because of the writer's strike. Also just because the movie is so poorly made. In terms of like the writing and everything. Audiences did not care at all. <laughs> because it opened way bigger <laughs> than the first Transformers. And the first Transformers, you know, for a non-sequel, it opened like, like, it's like massively. The thing is, the first Transformers technically opened like on a... Tuesday, so Monday, Tuesday, so it's kind of weird, but it made like 155 million in six days. That is nothing to sneeze at at all. That is fantastic, right? But Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Two, made uh, 200 million in five days, which is a crazy number. Still to this day, that's a crazy number. I think the only movie that is actually beaten in terms of like a Wednesday to Sunday tally is the Super Mario Brothers movie from this year, which only did slightly better. <laughs> I think it was like a 204 uh, million in five days. But still, these numbers are crazy. It made $62 million on a Wednesday. Can you imagine that? <laughs> that much money on a weekday? Crazy. And end up making more than the first movie, making four hundred million domestic, eight hundred million worldwide. It's the biggest Transformers movie domestically. So yeah, obviously you want to keep going. <laughs> and twenty eleven, that's what we got: Dark of the Moon, Transformers three. And one would think Transformers two, it's horrible, horrible reputation would have really sunk Dark of the Moon. Not the case. <laughs> I mean, sure, it made a bit less domestically, but it still made a substantial amount. Open of like 97 million, although it opened like midweek, <laughs> just like the first two. And like, it's big like holiday start with like, there's a six day opening technically. Made 180 million, 97 for like the proper three day. Made 350 plus million domestically. And made a 1.1 billion worldwide, which in, in that with that number, Dark Dark on the Moon is technically the highest grossing Transformers movie ever, <laughs> right? So, yeah, so Transformers is doing fantastic at this point. Sure, none of the movies are exactly um high quality, but that didn't matter because audiences like this was catnip. <laughs> for audiences it really was like michael bay clearly had the secret sauce and that sauce 
made the Transformers movies like big old events. Like these were like must watch movies for audiences everywhere. So yeah, things were going really, really good. Then we got Transformers 4 in 2014, Age of Extinction. All right, so this is where things get a little mixed. Domestically, it, it fell off quite a bit by a noticeable amount, making uh, $245 million domestically. It opened with like $100 million, although that number's been disputed by several studios, but... I'm going with what we got here. So let's say 100 million opening weekend, 245 million domestic, which is the lowest of these movies at that point, but it didn't matter. Okay. Because any weakness it showed domestically made up for internationally because it made 1.1 billion again, just slightly under Dark of the Moon. And it's, you know, internationally, it's the biggest Transformers movie ever and that's mainly because of china where it did just bonkers <laughs> it did bonkers over there helped that the movie had a lot of product placement <laughs> in it a lot of chinese product placement and how the final act took place in china so yeah of course it would do well there <laughs> so and Fun fact, Transformers Age of Extinction was the only movie in 2014 to make a billion dollars, which is a really sad statement because there are so many movies that deserve to be billion dollar hits more than this one. But what can you do? <laughs> so yeah, Transformers was still in a healthy spot at this point. And the last... <laughs> actually... Mm. Should I go over the last night now? Because I feel like the whole movie is a con. Ugh. Well, you know what? Let's. I'll talk about the last night later. I'll go in depth. You know, in depth when it comes to that. I mean, Bumblebee. Let's. That's more positive. So Bumblebee was the spinoff. Came out in twenty eighteen, Christmas time. Had a really lackluster opening weekend, but had decent legs for Christmas. Made four hundred sixty-five million worldwide. Sure, it didn't make us nowhere near as much as the others, but it did cost a lot less, which definitely softens the blow. And you know that eventually led to Rise of the Beast. So, and plus, Bumblebee is considered the only good Transformers movie. You know, most the only legitimately good Transformers movie. So, it's, it's got that going for it. But yeah, Transformers, these movies, I mean, say what you want about them quality-wise, but there is a, lo a long, notable history of success, if you exclude The Last Night. <laughs> Ignoring Last Night, all these Transformers movies were hits, financial hits. So I'm definitely labeling that as a pro, you know, just yeah, um, brand name recognition with Transformers. It's such like a big iconic series like when you hear the name transformers you know what people are talking about you know about robots that go from cars vehicles to you know it's i don't know what i was trying to say my that my thought process was going <laughs> it's late but yeah transformers big brand huge brand pro let's just label that as a pro uh another pro is that competition wise i mean all there really is right now is across the spider-verse that's really it everything else is just kind of old it's kind of like <laughs> like very old i mean guardians 3 is like over a month old fast x has fallen off pretty fa pretty hard and everything and Little Mermaid that that's going after a completely different demographic. So yeah, there's not a whole lot of direct competition, you know, nothing that will kill this movie or at least do like you know, fatal damage to, to it. I mean sure there's stuff coming up down the line, but for this weekend, it's it's not too bad. So I'm gonna label that as a pro, you know, competition not being too severe so that's a pro 
another pro is um although reviews for this movie aren't very good the audience score is a lot better it's quite a bit better actually because i'm about to i'm trying to pull it up okay so it has a 90 percent audience score so this is definitely a case of audience is liking a movie more than critics which is literally the case for all the transformers movies minus bumblebee although i guess minus last night too because people just did not like that movie at all um like not even like fans like that movie uh and it's uh rise of the beast cinema score let me pull it up here it's an a minus which is very good that's a solid no that's a solid grade. So yeah, word of mouth for this movie, general audience word of mouth, is positive. And that's very important, <laughs> okay? You need that in order to have some type of life at the box office. If you have, like, really poor word of mouth, you're, you will not live long. <laughs> so yeah, word of mouth for this movie seems to be pretty positive amongst audiences. So that's definitely a pro in my book. Um trying to think of some other pros on top of my head i guess i could talk about its preview number which was a lot better than what i thought it was going to be <laughs> because it opened with like 8.8 million although it had like early wednesday showings along with thursday previews and technically its actual thursday previews are 7.6 i mean comparing this to other movies let's compare shall we uh where is Bumble, yeah, Bumblebee. Let's compare it to that. And last night, uh, Fast X. Might as well compare it to that too. All right. So, Rise of the Beast, eight point eight million total previews. For comparison's sake, uh, Bumblebee, the last Transformers movie we got, had a well, it didn't even show Thursday previews. Shoot, but its Thursday previews are better than Bumblebee's opening day. Which is a very, very, very positive sign, if you ask me. So, there's that. And then Transformers The Last Night. That came out on a Wednesday. But still, I had a preview number of 5.5. So, obviously, 8.8 is much better than 5.5. So, that's a positive sign. And uh, Fast X, which came out last month, uh, had a... Thursday preview of 7.5, which is pretty much the same as Rise of the Beast's actual preview number of 7.6. So, and Fast X opened like between 65 and 70 million, which, you know, for Rise of the Beast, that would be nice. That'd be a, a big old step up from the last two Transformers movies. So, these Thursday previews, I believe, are positive. Granted, they're nowhere near as... Like, it's... There's so many other movies that have done better <laughs> than Transformers. I mean, Across the Spider-Verse last weekend was 17 million. You got the Ant-Man 3, Guardians 3, 17 million. Like, all of them. Uh, I mean, Transformers Age of Extinction. I don't know if it'll show it. Will it show it? 8.8. Wow, that's weird. Although that was a different... I think that was like later... Those happened like later in the day. It was kind of like really late previews. So it's not exactly apples to apples. But open on par with it. So there's that. I mean, open with 100 million. I don't think that's going to happen <laughs> for Rise of the Beast. But I mean, there's... You know, there's that to look at. Um... John Wick 4, you know what, might as well compare it to that too. You know, another like male-centric action franchise. That I Thursday preview 8.9 and open of 73 million. So these preview numbers tell me that this movie isn't gonna be the bomb I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> so you know that's good. Cause I was really worried for this movie for a second. But apparently, it's doing fine. I mean, it, you know, compared to other Transformers movies, it's way lower. But you know what? At least it's not an embarrassment, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Thursday previews, I would label as a pro. 
in my book. So that's a pro. Um, are there any other pros? I mean, Paramount's been pushing this movie very hard. I mean, they kind of have to. This is like one of their big movies of the year. <laughs> Besides Mission Possible or Dead Reckoning Part 1. And plus Transformers has been like a cash cow for them. So obviously they're going to push it. So people definitely know this movie comes out. Although I will mention like the trailers. Like the trailers I've seen in theaters are really weird. Like they're not like full length trailers. They're like they're like 30 second ads. Like and it just throws me off. <laughs> I'm just like, why can't you just reveal like, a real trailer? You know, like a legitimate trailer. Why are you just showing it's off and like very... Like, it just seems like it's very like sloppily cut. Like, I don't understand why they would do that, but whatever. But the point is, marketing is there. People know this movie exists. And their Paramount is treating it like a big blockbuster. As they should. So, because, I mean, they spent Blockbuster money on it. $195 million. So, you better spend that money. <laughs> to make sure this movie makes its money back. So, yeah. I say marketing is a pro. And I think that's it with pros. Okay, cons. Transformers. Going back to Transformers. While there's a lot of financial success... With Transformers, like the live action movies, like reputation wise, it is, ooh, <laughs> like it is bad, dude. Like Transformers movies, like they have like some of like one of the worst reputations when it comes to like big budget franchises. I mean, like the only excluding Bumblebee and I guess Rise of the Beast too, like the only Transformers movies that people really tolerated were the first and dark and the moon and dark and the moon only because of the final act which was legitimately awesome but some of the other transformers movies jesus christ they're ooh. right revenge of the fallen is a garbage fire of a movie <laughs> i mean for many reasons one of the reasons definitely being like the humor dear god the humor in these transformers movies it's so Oh, it's it's unwatchable. It's like it's so juvenile and it feels like a 12 year old wrote it. Like it, it's embarrassing watching it now to think that an actual adult wrote this. Like it's. Ugh. Uh, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I'm just I'm getting flashbacks. I mean, with Revenge of the Fallen. I mean, remember Mudflap and Skids? Yeah. <laughs> the you know, the not so subtly racist duo of transformers and they are very much racist like look, i don't get like up in arms like a bunch of other people when it comes to, like stereotypes and stuff i don't go on rants about it like i'm just like oh well but with revenge of the fallen yeah that that shit was bad i will never defend that <laughs> and so yeah that pretty much just if that, that that's a stain that's a black mark on the whole franchise mud flapping skids yikes um and an age of extinction was also very poorly received that movie is only remembered for that fucking um romeo and juliet scene like they literally okay <laughs> um in the movie, you got Kate Yeager, Mark Wahlberg, who's an inventor, which is like the most unrealistic <laughs> thing ever. Imagining Mark Wal someone like Mark Wahlberg as an inventor. I just don't buy it at all. But like his daughter is dating this dude, and his daughter's a minor, but the dude she's dating is an adult, and the movie tries to justify this by showing off like the Romeo and Juliet laws. And, you know, they'd be like, okay, it's, it's, it's not as bad as it looks, guys. But apparently it turns out the stuff they showed in the movie was total bullshit, according to Amazon Prime Video. Because if you watch the movie on Amazon Prime Video, um, there's like a, um, there's like a section of it, like on the far left of the screen, where there's like IMDb, like little facts about the movie that like play as like the movie plays out. 
Apparently, the Roman and Juliet laws they showed uh, were incorrect, false. So you literally had a grown uh, an adult, you know, dating a teen, uh, dating a minor, and the movie is just like, this is fine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I have to mention that because I didn't. Like, I already knew about it, but I didn't realize how bad it was. I think the video was from a pointless hub where he made a video about Transformers 4. That 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 whole thing caught me off guard. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. And then the last night, for fuck's sake, that w- watching that movie in theaters was absolutely miserable. <laughs> it was a, an absolute travesty, even more than Revenge of the Fallen, honestly, because last night, that had so many problems, the fact that the movie felt like, some of it was just straight up false advertising, how they were marketing Octopus Prime being evil, like this is like the big hook, and he's only evil for like, not even five minutes, I think, so like, why even market the movie that way, and I... I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the aspect ratio, like the format changes of the movie are so constant. It was, like, it was going like wide full, wide full, the screen constantly changing. It bothered me. It distracted me. I've never had that problem with any movie ever <laughs> until that. But, but it's probably for the best it distracted me because it distracted me from the actual movie. But yeah, last night is a fucking disaster. <laughs> That's a movie I never want to experience ever again. And speak of the last night, it bombed. Yeah, it did terrible. It only it as you can see, the box office it just fell off hard from Transformers Four because I guess audiences they finally grew a couple brain cells and were like, you know what, these Transformers movies, I don't think. I don't think they're very good. Maybe we should stop watching these things. <laughs> Maybe in audience just kind of had enough of like Bayformers, and yeah, the movie lost quite a bit of money. I know it doesn't look like it because you look at oh two hundred seventeen million budget six hundred million that it should make a profit. No, it didn't. It lost money, <laughs> like for real. It lost quite a bit of cash. And then Bumblebee, well, that was going to come out anyway, but at least Bumblebee made some money. And now we're here with Rise of the Beast. So yeah, Transformers, quality-wise, reputation-wise, it is dismal. (laughs) Absolutely dismal. So I'm definitely labeling that as a con, you know. And like, I feel like with Bumblebee and Rise of the Beast, like both of those movies have to deal with like that stigma of the, all those Bayformer movies, and because like they're so, I mean the Bayformer movies like they have like so many like Michael Bay isms, you know like explosions, <laughs> explosions, big old CGI fest, um, American flags, military, juvenile humor, no character development, hot girls with no characters. Um, let's see what, those are like the main stuff, like the main isms, <laughs> the main Michael Bay isms, his trademarks, if you will. And, you know, oh yeah, lack of plot too. <laughs> My soul mentioned that. So yeah, the, the Transformers movies from Michael Bay, their reputations, that's obviously a con in my book. So yeah, I mean, sure, they were financial hits, but it doesn't mean they were, you know, loved. They're they're seen as like high art, because even general audiences like they had enough. They tapped out <laughs> by the fifth movie, so yeah, that's a con. Another con is that uh, the I already mentioned like across the Spider Verse. I mean, it may not do too much damage, but it's still there. Like, that movie opened real big last weekend. Like, it's still... It definitely still has a pulse. <laughs> and it has, like, super, really, really, really good word of mouth. And, obviously, that's going to hurt Rise of the Beast a bit. I don't think it's going to kill it. But it's going to have some type of impact. Not to mention, like, next weekend we got The Flash coming out. 
That's because that's definitely going to take away Rise of the Beast's big screens. And then, like, two weeks later, you got, like, Indiana Jones uh, and Dial of Destiny. And then, like, two weeks after that, Mission Possible. So, Rise of the Beast doesn't have a whole lot of time to make a whole lot of money. So, yeah. I'd say competition in the future, and not to mention spider versus you know, box office success and momentum... I would label those as cons for this movie. So, yeah, those are those are cons. Um, trying to think of some other cons, really. I mean, I thought the movie had like no hype going into it. I didn't feel hype like the same way I felt the hype for like Across the Spider Verse or the Mario movie. <laughs> like, I felt hype for those movies or John Wick Four. I really felt hype for those. I didn't feel much hype for this. I didn't feel like much attention was on this movie, but apparently I I goofed. I underestimated the hype for the movie because it had a really good, uh, really nice Thursday preview number. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, I don't know. That's just kind of like what I thought was going to happen, but it clearly hasn't happened. So, I'm not even going to label it as a con or anything. So, um, I'm trying to think of some other cons. Because I mentioned competition. I mentioned, um, the Transformers, you know, the past Transformers movies and their reputations. I might as well mention, oh, re- review score. How could I forget? As a 53% uh, critic score, that's not great at all. But, I mean, it is better than average for the franchise. I mean, when a 53% is better than average, we have problems. <laughs> Serious problems. But as I already mentioned, audience score is much higher. This is a movie that audiences will like a lot more than critics. So really doesn't matter. But I might as well label it as a con anyway. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Um... And that's really it. I think I mentioned all the major stuff. Yeah, that's it. So opening weekend. Hmm. Now, I imagine this movie's going to be a bit front loaded to an extent because, you know, it's very much a fan driven movie. So I don't know how front loaded, though. I don't think it's going to be too extreme. I see this definitely reaching above fifty million opening weekend. I I was I didn't even think it would make over fifty million, but it will now. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little higher. I'm gonna say it's gonna open between sixty to six. No, I'm gonna have a wide range, fifty five to sixty five million. That's what I'm going with. That's what I'm sticking with. I think that's a decent enough range. And, you know, for the movie, considering, like, recent Transformers movies, this would actually be pretty okay. Even with the stupidly large budget. (laughs) As long as it does well overseas. Because overseas, that's the movie. That's where the real money is. Just like Fast and the Furious. Overseas is crucial. If it doesn't do well overseas, this movie is fucked. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, but, like, domestically, it should at least make some money domestically. It and it should and it's domestic. It's final total. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. One fifty plus. <laughs> I think. I think it could, it should at least reach over one hundred fifty million. Anywhere above that, I think it's reasonable. So, yeah, yeah. Then that's it. And that's it for the weekend. Yes, one movie only, which is just great. <laughs> it feels really good to just only deal with like one thing. That's not going to be the case next weekend. Because next weekend we got not one, not two, but three movies to discuss. We got The Blackening, we got Elemental, and we got The Flash. There's going to be a lot to discuss regarding The Flash and Elemental. Not so much for The Blackening, but there is stuff to discuss with that. Yeah, next week is going to be real interesting. (laughs) 
And, you know, I guess we'll see how it all goes. I mean, obviously, all eyes are going to be on the Flash and how that performs. I don't know. Like, with both the Flash and Elemental, like, they got, like, their early reviews. Early reviews aren't exactly fantastic for either movie. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's going to hurt either movie. We'll see. We'll see come next weekend. But, yeah, those three movies right here, June 16th, all three of them, I'm going to cover them. So, stay tuned for those. But, yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. You want to check out more videos like this, got playlists on the homepage, all previous um, prediction videos I made this year. You want to watch any of those or any of the, pa any of the other ones I've done the past few years, you you want to watch any of those, go right ahead. There's also the Cancelled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. I covered Rise of the Beast once, I think. I think only once. Let me check. I need to check. Transformers. Blah, 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 blah. Where is it? Yes. Only once. Only once. Uh, that was episode 88. I talked about it alongside whatever the Star Trek movie was supposed to be for 2023. That got killed. Um, pretty much. So, yeah, that's the only time I really talked about it. So, yeah, you want to watch that episode or any other episodes I've done on the channel? It's like 192. So, yeah, plenty to choose from. I mean, the last... Uh, cancel episode I made was about um uh what was it Transformers One, which is a new like animated movie coming out next year. I taught I made episode about that. So you want to watch that or any other ones I've done hundred all hundred ninety two episodes. Want to watch them all from beginning to now? Highly encourage you you do that. So go do it. There's also um, box office recaps where I go over the box office results for a particular month. I just did the May recap yesterday or technically Thursday. <laughs> so made that. June recap will come out probably the first, I guess technically the second week of July. Probably around the same time as uh, Mission when Mission Possible Dead Reckoning Part 1 comes out. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos I made on the channel, you can go right ahead. And, yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.